Stacy Knapp is now going to give us a presentation about the emissions profile Maine and what we need to know about that. Stacy is a emissions inventory manager at the DEP. So Stacy, the floor is yours. Come on up and um, let's hear about where we actually are right now. Hi, so yes, I'm Stacy Knapp. I head up the emissions inventory section at Maine DEP, and we are really excited. Um, we have just wrapped up a couple of weeks ago our eighth biennial report on progress toward greenhouse gas reduction goals. I know that you all have spent the last two and a half weeks meticulously studying this report, but for the two of you in the audience that have not memorized it, I'm going to run through a couple of the results and then we're going to have some time for questions, okay? Now, before I get into this, I want to remind you all that as of the seventh biennial report, we actually saw a slight uptick in emissions, so we were a little anxious in terms of meeting our 2020 goal. But adding two more years to that, we now have a decrease in emissions, which is hugely exciting. Um, so what you're looking at in this figure are our gross emissions. Now, that's the top blue line. That's emissions of everything. So that's CO2 and all of the other greenhouse gases, including things like carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide. The green line just below is CO2 emissions from burning fossil fuel. So that's most of the emissions, right? That's about 90% of our gross emissions. The dotted line is our 2020 goal. So that's 10% below the 1990 levels. So in 2020, we want to be at at least 19.1 or lower. That's 10% below the 21.2 we saw for gross emissions in 1990. As of 2017, we are at 17.5 which coincidentally is exactly 17.5% lower than the 1990 levels. And I triple checked that because that was a little too convenient. Um, so we are currently on track to meeting our 2020 goal, which is really exciting, but we still have three more years of data to come in before we know exactly where we stand. Um, so let's look at those goals. I know Jerry went over a couple of these already. Um, in this figure, you can see that solid blue line again. That's the data that we know. That's the 1990 through 2017 gross emissions of greenhouse gases. And then you'll see dots on this figure that represent our goals. Now the dotted line is that 1990 baseline level. So the first dot you're gonna see is our 2010 goal, which was to be at 1990 levels. And we successfully achieved that goal. Our 2020 goal is to be 10% below those 1990 levels. Our 2030 goal is to be 45% below those levels, and our 2050 goal is to be 80% below those 1990 levels. Now, if we can continue to realize the emission reductions that we've seen since 2002 is that peak up there, then we're on track, but that's gonna be a difficult task. So let me back up a little bit and explain to you a little bit about how we get this data, how we track our greenhouse gas emissions. So at DEP, we use EPA's state inventory tool, which we lovingly refer to as the SIT. Um, now this tool is publicly available. If anyone wants to download it, it's out on the EPA website. That tool, the foundational data set of that tool comes from the Energy Information Administration. So they collect lots of information on fuel, for example, and they combine this all into what's called the SEDS, the State Energy Data System. And that combines information collected from EIA as, long as, as well as a bunch of other data sets, and they produce a model of our consumption data in the US by state. So this is consumption of all different types of, of fuels and renewables. Now, the SIT pulls all of that SEDS data in, along with a number of other data sets, and models and tries to fill in the gaps to come up with our emissions by state. Now, at Maine, we have some data that the federal government might not have, and we plug that into the SIT as well. So we are able to refine this tool and tweak it to best represent the data that we have for Maine, to try to get our emissions data as accurate as we possibly can. So we enter in things like vehicle miles traveled, solid waste landfilled. We tweak some of the industrial processes. If we know that we don't manufacture lime or iron in the state, we're gonna delete that. Um, so, as I said, we can refine this for Maine, so we're pretty confident in the data. You're going to see data presented in two different ways. You're going to see it in million metric tons of CO2, and that is CO2 from the burning of fossil fuels only. As you saw from that first figure, that's 90% of our emissions, though, so that's a big chunk, right? You're also going to see million metric tons of CO2 equivalents. Now, that means CO2 plus all the other greenhouse gases 
converted by their global warming potential, according to IPCC. That's all of them summed up. Okay, so you're talking about CO2, methane, nitrous oxide, our HFCs, our PFCs, SF6, the lot. Now, the CO2 data, the SIP provides the summaries of that in terms of sectors. So that's where you get your residential, commercial, industrial, transportation, and electric utility. The gross emissions are given in terms of source category. So we're looking at energy, agriculture, waste, and industrial processes. So I'll explain this as we go, but just keep that information in mind. So first, let's jump in and look at gross emissions by source category for 2017. There's a winner here, right? Um, so energy makes up the most of, 90% of our gross emissions. So this is our consumption and demand for energy that is driving these greenhouse gas emissions. Now, industrial processes, agriculture, and waste, all combined, only make up about 10% of that. Now, still, that's a 10% we need to look at, and we can do some work, but um, energy is the big chunk here. So if we look at that big blue piece of the pie and break that down a little bit further over time, you can see the different energy sources that we use in Maine over time from 1990 to 2017. And you're going to see the biggie at the bottom is petroleum. So in 2017, 49% of our, our consumption, energy consumption, was petroleum. And that makes up 84% of our CO2 emissions. So that's a biggie. Now, let me add that although Maine does rely on petroleum products to meet much of our energy demand, we have seen significant CO2 emission reductions due to switching to lower carbon fuels, to improved energy efficiencies, such as the CAFE standards for vehicles, and an increase in our use of renewable resources. And you can see this on this figure. So you can see in 2000, natural gas, for example, pops up. We were virtually using none in 1990. Okay, and you can see that's a big piece of the pie from 2000 to 2017. You can also start to see wind. Um, so right up at the top there on the right, you can see that turquoise se segment is, you can actually see it now and it's growing. So that's something to be excited about. Now, if we break up that lower portion, that petroleum piece a little bit further and look at consumption by fuel type, um, you can see distillate oil, motor gasoline, those are the big pieces. But overall, for petroleum, we have seen a 26% decrease in CO2 emissions since 1990. And a big reason for this is residual fuel oil. So we see a 95% reduction from 1990 to 2017. That's huge. Now, some of that is switching to lower carbon fossil fuels, such as natural gas, but some of it is switching to renewable resources. Now, if we look at petroleum consumption by sector, you can see transportation takes the lead. And transportation has been taking the lead since 1990, so straight across the board. And their consumption of petroleum has actually gone up since 1990 by 6%. You can see all of the other sectors, the consumption has actually gone down, some just a little bit, um, some more than others. Industrial, for example, petroleum consumption has decreased significantly. That's the blue line on that figure. So if we switch gears a little bit and look at CO2 emissions from fossil fuel consumption, combustion, excuse me, by sector, you're going to see that transportation also takes the lead, which we assume based on their petroleum consumption. So transportation is 54% of our CO2 emissions from fossil fuel. Now, residential is second at 19%. So we need to be taking a closer look at that as well. So if we look at this over time, CO2 emissions from the combustion of fossil fuels by sector since 1990, you can see that transportation again takes the lead since 1990, throughout the entire time frame. 54% in 2016 and up 2.5% since 1990. Now all of the other sectors again have actually reduced their CO2 emissions since 1990, which is something to celebrate. Residential barely scraping by at 0.3%, commercial down 24%, the industrial sector is down 58%, which is impressive. And electric utilities, I'd like you to focus on that line, the, the kind of turquoisey color, is down 50% since 1990. But look at that peak, look at that peak in like 2002. So we've actually seen an 83% decline since 2002. Now this is in part a lot to switching to renewable fuels, which is wonderful. So in a nutshell, the big takeaways from the report 
are that gross emissions in 2017 were 17.5 percent below 1990 levels. So we are on track to meet our short-term 2020 goal. We're not there yet. We still need three more years of data. 90 percent of emissions are the result of energy consumption, mostly from the combustion of petroleum products. 54 percent of Maine's CO2 emissions in 2017 were from the transportation sector. CO2 emissions from fossil fuel combustion in the electric power sector have decreased by 83% since they peaked in 2002. And you can see more information about that specific sector in the report. The transportation residential sectors have both the highest consumption of petroleum and the highest emissions of CO2 from burning fossil fuels. So these are the big takeaways. The report is available on the DEP website for the couple of you that haven't already got it. Um, and there's a lot more information. There's more data in the appendices than I've presented in the, in the report itself. So all of the, the data that we use, all the tables um, and supporting data are in the back of that document for you to peruse. Um, let me say that I am really excited that folks are interested in this data. Our group does not normally get a lot of attention. So <laughs> this is great um, that our work is being used. And um, my contact information is here. I know I can take a few questions now, but if I don't get to you or if I don't know the answer to your question right away, please reach out to me. My email and phone are right there. I love to talk about this stuff, and I would, I would love to answer your questions.